I see vending machines on our thing, and I, I think that a vending machine business is probably the most predictable, simple, understandable, guaranteed type of business you could do. Is that what you're going to? Yes. Yeah, so these uh, two folks came to me, and they pitched this idea. They're raising money for it. It's a vending machine business uh, for – it basically is mostly female products, so tampons and stuff in uh, bathrooms. And – Oddly enough, I had another guy email me a deck about a vending machine business, and I'm not going to do that one. But this first one was kind of intriguing. They've got some traction. They're making money. It's kind of intriguing. And I started doing some research, and I tweeted out, who knows everything about who's the person who talked about vending machine? It got a ton of traction for some reason. I think a lot of people are interested in, in this. This guy named Quinn Miller reached out to me, and I did a call with him this morning. Very fascinating. He worked, and I, and I just want to bring this up because this is the exact opposite of what we were just talking about. Right. But it's oddly as compelling and as interesting, even though it's the two totally different uh, parts of the world. So this guy, he's 27. He worked in software sales. He quit about a year ago to start this business. He's got a vending machine business and he gave me all of his numbers and he said I could reveal it. So he's about 10 months into the thing. He's currently doing $15,000 in monthly revenue and he's doing that across 27 machines. His startup costs were six hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, or four hundred dollars to buy a machine and two hundred dollars to fix it and move it to the place where it had to go. By the and way, then, this is our weekly blue collar side hustle. <laughs> this is the perfect great. blue collar side hustle. Yeah. So on the fifteen thousand in revenue, sixty five percent is profit. So he's doing around uh, ninety seven, ninety eight hundred dollars a month in profit so far. Total investment into the biz so far, after he already bought his first machine, has been fifty thousand dollars. Time involvement per week, relatively high, 20 hours a week, because he's actually delivering all the stuff. I asked him all about it. I was like, how does this work? Because the reason I reached out to this guy was I was like, hey, uh, there's this like tampon startup. It kind of looks interesting. What's your tampon vending machine startup? What's your opinion? He goes, yeah, I mean, I obviously don't know anything about that like uh, too much. But basically, my opinion is the world, uh, he goes, America runs on Coke and Monster Energy drink. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, "Let let me explain. So I put these vending machines. I love that. I so, buy, so let's slow down. So so the guy basically buys vending machines like you and I are used to, just a snack vending machine. Nothing nothing innovative there. Well, he does one quote innovative thing. Um, he puts a he installs a credit card machine on him for about two hundred fifty bucks. You can get a credit card machine. Okay, so he gets a, he's a vending machine. And he says, all right, people aren't carrying quarters, so I'm going to take cards. He yeah. puts them. Uh, he puts them. So he buys each machine. You said for five five hundred bucks. The first one was five hundred. He has twenty seven machines uh, with fifty k. So whatever that math is. So what's so that? Two two k a machine roughly. Yeah. Okay. So he buys a thousand to two thousand dollar machine. He puts it in places like what office buildings, so, apartments. Yeah. Or- so he cold calls uh, lower income hotels, uh, motels, assisted living places, and and uh, low income apartments. So, okay. Sorry, low income apartments. Dash, or comma, motels, comma, assisted living places. Okay, great. And, and yeah. so he, he goes and he basically says, hey, put this here. And he sh- there's a revenue split or he pays rent. How does that work? So most of these businesses, the way that they work is they give 10% to 20% to the real estate folk. Right. Uh, this guy, he goes, I actually, am, because I sold software, I'm pretty good at sales. And I do what's called a value sell. And he goes, basically, I say, look. Your tenants are, are, if I just improve your tenant experience by just a small percent, maybe you're going to make more money because someone will want to stay or want to rent here. He gives them nothing. (laughs) He gives them nothing. And so he's got uh, a bunch of machines in like 10 different locations and he just cold calls them. And then it's so unsophisticated. Where does he get his stuff? Costco. So he buys a can of Coke from Costco for 33 cents and he charges a dollar for it. Right. Uh, It's very simple. Uh, not complicated at all. By the and way, my grandfather like, used to have a vending machine. So this was probably the first business I ever encountered was, I think I was probably five years old and my parents, you know, they worked. So my dad would work in an office building and he needed me to be babysat. But then like, you know, old people also kind of need babysitting. So my dad went for a two for one. He basically bought or rented out a, a, a little, like kind of like a corner store inside, like a, like a little deli inside of the uh, office building. And, um, and then my, my grandfather ran it and we used to go like work the register at the age of, you know, seven. Um, and he was like, baby, see, baby, see, he basically, he occupied his grand grandparents and his kids without having to like do any pay for any like caretakers. In fact, it made a little bit of money. And then my grandfather had this vending machine that we used to go and do this exact refill. We would go to Costco, buy the Cokes, put it in. He would collect a bag of like change and then we would like go to the bank and like exchange the change. And I remember being like, what is this? He had one vending machine as his business. 
it sounds awesome. And I <laughs> asked the guy, uh, by the way, this guy's name is Quinn Miller. I'll give him a shout out. Quinn Miller. I asked him, I go, how big can this get? He goes, look, I'm not trying to be offensive or anything, but the operators of these businesses typically are pretty hillbilly. Right. Um, and so they're pretty unsophisticated, which doesn't mean they're dumb. They're just not sophisticated in terms of like technology or anything like that. And they like, there's a low key, easy life. He goes, but I met a guy in Palm Springs who had about 1600 machines and he was making anywhere from five to 10 million in revenue with about half in profit. Right. And I was like, well, that's pretty amazing. How else can it get big? Like, what else is big? And he said that there's a company called Canteen. And I looked it up. I, I, I think it's public. Uh, but they do like 15 billion in sales of this. And they're the largest vending machine company in America. They operate them. Yeah. And they do distribution. So the thing is, is like what this guy does, uh, Quinn, he, he, finds, he finds his route. So he finds a route. So he's like, all right, if I go from destination A to B, it's a straight line. I'll do everything in between. And right. so I try to find locations on the way so one truck can do all of it in, a, in, a, in an easy, short amount of time. And he's like, I'm very specific, specific about where I choose. And that's where you make a lot of money is you can be very efficient with your time. And right. so basically, that's what he does. And he said, this company, Canteen, just does that on a huge scale. And they're ultimately, at the end of the day, a logistics company uh, and a bit of a supply chain company. But at this point, Quinn told me, he was like, I rented a small warehouse now because I'm getting so much freaking coke. He goes, the reason I like doing that. And, and so back to tampons, he goes, you have to like look at what the repeat purchase rate is. He goes, if I go to like a lower income area, these folks love Coke and love Monster to the point that one guy will drink five Cokes a day. I'm getting right. five dollars from them. You have to ask yourself, can you get that for uh, tampons or, or other products? And he goes, in fact, a lot of the vending guys, once they move from Coke and Monster Energy Drink, they're starting to go with, into what's called honesty market. So basically at a WeWork, you know how they like you swipe your credit card and you only take one sandwich for $8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, that's where the money is right now. Huh. That's so, interesting. And um yeah, that's so. It's almost like there's whales for the vending machine. It's not like everybody buys one uh, every three days. It's like one guy drinks nine cokes a day, uh, or you know, four Red Bulls, you know, a week, and that's where you make your money is on the like ten percent of the of the residents who buy like ninety percent of the goods or something like that, probably. Yeah, this guy was interesting, man. He's only 27. He's uh, he lives in San Diego. Worked in tech sales. He told me that uh, he goes. Like basically, I'm a pretty. He goes, I'm pretty. I was pretty good at selling software. Um, I'm not the best, but I'm pretty good. And this industry that I went into, they're just kind of not that great at that right. many stuff. And I could outsell relatively easily. I could kind of outwork relatively easily. And so, anyway, fascinating story. 